Father Becker, Reverend Fathers, honored guests, and my brothers. Uh, this past May, as I was studying abroad, uh, I received news via email that I was to be assigned to Father Jim Frederick, a priest from the Diocese of Sioux Falls in central South Dakota. So I was going to go from, from Roma, Italia to Woonsocket, South Dakota, <laughs> population 763. Well, this meant I had to leave behind some things like the Pope and St. Peter's and gelato. <laughs> it also meant I received a great mentor and a personal hero. Father Jim Frederick taught me what it meant to be a priest and to serve our Lord and to serve the kingdom as a pastor. Father Jim Frederick is a man who gives his heart, soul, mind, and strength to serving the kingdom. Uh, he's not just pastor of Woonsocket, but also the towns of Wessington Springs, population 1,100, Artesian, population 76, and of a little place called Duncan that's not really a town, it used to have a post office, but it closed in 1936. <laughs> but Father Jim is a very just pastor. He gives all of, all of his congregations the time and the attention they deserve. We would live at one rectory, but at least two nights a week, we were overnight at the other rectory. Um, and he studies theology, he studies the catechism and reviews to prepare for his homilies. He's constantly looking out for new documents coming from the U USCCB and from the diocesan offices because he wants to give his people what the church is asking of him. Uh, this summer, for example, he was determined to give his congregations ways to participate in the fortnight for freedom. A, typo, a typical day for us over the summer began early. Uh, he would always make sure that I had a hearty breakfast, which in, usually consisted of oatmeal or else leftovers from the day before. Uh, and then we were on the road. We would celebrate Mass at one of the parishes, uh, do maintenance work, bring Holy Communion to, you know, far out farm places and ranches. Uh, and then we'd usually eat the senior meal in town so we didn't have to cook, you know, and join the 60-plus crowd. Uh, but the work closest to Father Jim's heart was visiting inactive, uh, fallen away Catholics to invite them back to the faith. He would spend hours researching, you know, asking people, asking around, trying to find names. And then whenever we had a free morning or afternoon, we were out on the road, going to different ranches and houses, knocking on doors, leaving calling cards, inviting people back to the church. Uh, and this is where I saw his true nature. He was a pastor in the full sense of the word. He was a shepherd. He was an apostle. He was an ambassador for Christ. But like any apostle, Father Jim also had his struggles. He was a man acquainted with infirmities. Uh, and this has been the case since his time in seminary. Uh, because he's one of the greatest, most active priests in our diocese, one might get the impression that Father Jim has a really dynamic personality or is you know, very externally je uh, zealous, but that's not the case. Uh, in fact, 25 years ago, he was asked to leave the North American College, and then he was dropped by his home diocese in Iowa. Uh, the reasons both times were his shy nature and his lack of social skills. And now he's one of the most incredible priests in our diocese. But these still present challenges for him. They didn't go away the minute he was ordained. Uh, he also knows great suffering and great hardship because of visiting the inactive uh, Catholics. You know, time and time again, we were just kind of politely dismissed from house, from farm, from ranch. Uh, whereas he was trying to give his heart and his soul to these people and putting his putting all of his strength into, into bringing them back. He felt the pain of rejection. Uh, I asked him once how he handled this, how he handles the constant frustration of, uh, of, of not being received, not being accepted. And he responded with uh, Tobit 13, Blessed are those who weep over you, over all your chastisements, Jerusalem, for they shall rejoice in you as they behold all your joy forever. Uh, and I, I came to see that it was the word of God and especially his relationship with Christ, the incarnate word, that gave Father Jim the strength to continue on, that gave him consolation in the midst of all his difficulties. Uh, because he's doing it all out of his love for Christ. You know, when, when visiting uh, fallen away Catholics, it's not out of a, a personal desire to be a better pastor. It's out of, uh, it's out of love for them. And, and that's shown in the fact that he prays for them daily. And with parish boundaries that cover a couple hundred square miles, that's a long list of people to pray for. 
Um, and as, you know, as our Lord was accustomed to rise early or stay out late in the hills praying, uh, Father Jim was up before me every single morning and he went to bed after me every single night. Because what was happening was all of those frustrations, all of the personal struggles and limitations and weaknesses, those didn't hold him back. They all became fuel for the fire of love that I saw burning between Father Jim and the tabernacle every morning and every night. Uh, it, was, it was out of that love that he was and is the great pastor and the great priest that he is. He told me this summer uh, a couple of things that really struck me. One of them was that he asked the Lord in seminary, uh, because, he was, because he was struggling, you know, coming from a large, uh, a very wholesome, close-knit family, he was struggling with the idea of celibacy, and he finally said, Lord, if you want me to do this, you're going to have to be really real to me in prayer. And I saw that the Lord had not let him down and had not disappointed him, uh, because he took that weakness and that need to him. And Father Jim said, Joseph, it's hard work but I love what I do. And I just pray that we may, in all of our weaknesses, in all of our faults and struggles, love with the same magnanimous love that burns in the heart of Father Jim Frederick. Praise be Jesus Christ. Now and forever.